I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So, um, if you want to talk about lost memories, or, or not lost memories, but bad memory, I am convinced that there's a whole scene in uh, Ace Ventura in this this area. Like, yeah. every time I watch this part of the movie where he's got the two spears in his legs, yeah, there's always a scene that I'm, like, 100% sure is there, and I'm mm-hmm. expecting to see it, but it never shows up. And I can't remember what the scene was. I think he pulled an apple out of someone's, like, neck. What? Yeah. He's never pulled an apple out of anyone's neck. The the rhino birth scene's great, though. I remember the first time I saw it. I see a picture of him holding an apple. Okay. No, no. It's the tribal challenges bit. I, I guess that was there. <laughs> I, I gotta say, uh, When Nature Calls is probably my favorite uh, Ace Ventura of the two Ace Ventura movies. Oh yeah, let's well, yeah. Uh, it's just good. If only for the rhino birthing scene. Yeah, no, that's the best part. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yep, yep, that's the scene. Yup. Yeah, and there you go. Pulls the apple out. Okay. Like I'm, I'm scrolling through my, uh, my Google Drive, and I've yeah. got like driving directions, HBZ stuff, oh, ingress God. stuff, ingress uh, stuff. Yeah. But it's been a hot minute since uh. I've heard anyone mention Ingress. I mean, it's still there. People play it still. But yeah. it's reached... I think it's reached the point... Oh, my God. I think it's reached the point that um, Ingress is no longer, like, easy to get into. Yeah. Right? It's like... I feel like the barrier of entry for Ingress is just too high. Yeah, that's true. Oh, but I yeah. did uh, put something for you to check out real quick in the Cryptopedia facebook group uh ancient summoning ritual once the wind stopped blowing the blood started stopped flowing in mystical glowing somebody chest appeared in my backyard near the dead man's tree within was but a single dr- thumb drive with a lone mp3 titled do not watch this is what was inside john how are you former wwe superstar hornswoggle here i uh i hear you're doing an amazing job at the podcast at your edu- educational podcast you're doing um you're doing amazing research Keep that up. Keep up the awesome work. You're doing great. You're doing great, <laughs> great things about it. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that Rhinox is better than Cheetor. What? I don't know what that means. What? I promise I've been put up to it. But did you take care, man? Keep doing. I summoned the horn swallow. Have fun with it as well. What? How did? <laughs> what? What? It was a, it was an ancient blood ritual. But, uh, okay, no, no. How did you actually? How did you get the 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 hornswoggle to to respond to you? Uh, it was an ancient summoning ritual, and I implied it was a very important educational thing. <laughs> did you like send him an email? Uh, I've got I've got my sources. I think the podcast is over. <laughs> should we just end it now? I think we should. I think it's over because we've been. What? I, I'm so confused as to how that happened. <laughs> how did you? I. <laughs> oh boy. I. I'm dead. You, as you should be. Yeah. I didn't know that was even remotely a possibility. <laughs> All things are a possibility. You know what, Brandon? I, yeah. I need you to I need you to take me away and give me sweet release from the horn swoggle talk. <laughs> I, I'm just really concerned that this is just gonna become the podcast. The crypto swoggle. The crypto swoggle. <laughs> oh god. Like oh, why? Man. Welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, 
and I'm here with Chubbs the Wampug, a pug <laughs> that has a, a, a wampa outfit on. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This week's creature has been recorded as far back as 1674. It's horse-like in appearance. It lives in Scotland and is not so much seen uh, that that often today. Kelpie. You, and come on. Really? How did you, did it save it in the wrong folder? I, you said horse like in Scotland. That was a really easy yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. No, it's Kelpies. Yeah. I still it's... think you're cheating somehow. No, no. I just I've done a <laughs> lot of. Okay, so here's what I do. This is how. Yeah. I, let me let me uh let me reveal how I do research. I hit random. I smash random on the Cryptids <laughs> wiki. Yeah. I just smash on that random. Um, I am the Dark Prince, Mister Bubs. In the end, your gods will forsake you. But oh I shall God. always be here. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, let me let me start over. I smash on the random button on yeah. Cryptid's wiki. I keep reading it. If it looks like there's an easy podcast in it, I do it. <laughs> um. A hundred percent of my podcast episodes so far have been things that I can finish in two days. No. Oh man. Actually, that's a lie. There is one episode that I didn't finish in two days, and There's... that's the Black Dog of Bungay. It takes me like two days to decide which one I'm gonna do. <laughs> oh, it ta- it takes me two weeks to decide which one I'm going to do. <laughs> that's the real problem. Oh man. The uh, the online etymology dictionary defines Kelpies as the 1747 uh, Scottish of unknown origin, perhaps related to the Gaelic Kopak, which means heifer, steer, or colt, or kolpa, which means cow or horse. The lowland okay. name of a demon in the shape of a horse that was reputed to haunt the lakes and the rivers and to delight in causing drownings, but unlike its uh, other equivalents, uh, the Danish Nokin and the Icelandic Nierker, uh, it occasionally was benevolent, uh, especially to millers, by keeping their streams running. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know a few things about the Kelpie. I don't want to go into them. Yeah. Because I feel like you'll probably catch it. Okay. Um, but am I thinking of a Selkie? Kelpies and Selkies are very easy to, to get mixed up. They're very similar. Oh, yeah. Selkies are like ladies that turn into seals. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, <laughs> I, I have a few thoughts, but I, I don't want to steal your thunder. So let's let's keep going. Okay. Uh, typically appearing as a horse, Kelpies are also said to take human form, yet they sometimes they keep their hooves. <laughs> so now... Here's the question. Yes. Is it like an, an inverse donkey? An inverse you, donkey, Dude. the D and D character. Oh yeah, like an inverse donkey. Okay, so instead of instead of being a donkey with uh, hands on all four paws, all four hooves, um, it's a human who's got hooves for feet, normal yeah. human legs. Yeah. Uh, hooves for hands, normal human arms. <laughs> it's it's useless. Yeah. <laughs> it has all the drawbacks of being a human mm-hmm. and all the drawbacks of being a horse. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. get literally no benefit from that. <laughs> Who knows? There, there, there may be a talent uh, in there that could be found. <laughs> Don't think too hard about it. It's gonna be very difficult to try to to try to to think of one. Like a sex stuff. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I guess. I guess. I mean, technically. But... Yeah. This has been partially attributed to it being related to the devil. Um, sort of if you picture like the classic devil from like um, uh, Tenacious D or what have you, mm-hmm. where it's human but it's got the the hooves. Still, so so do they play almost satyr like? Do they play? They do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Selkies uh, are, are the Foo Fighters guitar everything. player. Yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah, just the everything. Actually, the everything. everything. Yeah, 
Uh, famous okay. poet Robbie Burns wrote a poem called Addressed to the Devil, which I won't read uh, because it's pretty rough, but he addresses the Kelpies when he's addressing the devil. Okay. So... It was a very hard read. <laughs> like, it was... It was, like, it was an old Scottish. Old common see. Scottish. Oh, was, boy. I mean, modern Scottish can be kind of difficult yeah. sometimes. It might even be in the links at the bottom of the page somewhere. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, this is, this is no good. Oh, God. When was Bobby... Robbie Burns? Mm -hmm. It's so weird with, like... So, there's a few names. Um, mm -hmm. William yeah. is one of them. Uh-huh. Robert's another one. Um, where there's, like, five different possible nicknames. Oh, yeah, and some of them just have nothing to do with the original name. Like, how do you get from William to Billy? Yeah, oh, how do you get to Bill? And how do you get to uh, Jack from John? That, that I never will understand. <laughs> that I don't know. Like... That's the weirdest nickname ever because it's like you're going from a monosyllabic word to another monosyllabic word. You're not saving time. Yeah. I mean, we – I work – we used to have five Johns in the department and uh, then it was very confusing. So we did have a – there was a Jack because – It'd get very confused. Like, they all had different – there was a, a Jack, a Jody, a Gumby. None of them went by John because – they were all. <laughs> it, it was. It was. Uh, everyone decided to take a a, a non uh, a non aggression treaty type thing. Yeah, where it's yeah. like, all right, <laughs> our actual name is No Man's Land. Yeah, Cause, like you'd have someone from marketing come up and be like, "Hey, is John here?" And just everyone <laughs> looks at them and goes, "Which one?" <laughs> just five of the six people. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Yep. Uh, Robbie Burns, by the way, while famous in Scotland, may be lesser known to Americans or people outside of Scotland, but he's the old Lang Syne guy. Uh, he's uh, Scotland's okay. bard and a uh, famous poet to the working class. He's sort of like a Scottish Bruce Springsteen, which is not like an understatement. Like, imagine someone being no, bigger than I... Bruce Springsteen, but only, like, to a local area. Yeah, I mean... I can def based on what you've told me, I can definitely see Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> like, um, did he did he have a song uh, born in the Scottish Moors? No, <laughs> I think that's the same number of syllables. That that's uh, I mean, you you get you get a, a D for effort. <laughs> it's there. Yep. Yeah, uh, just for fun, I did want to mention how awesome Robert Burns Day is, and yes, he does have his own day. And, what? Uh, I, I admit that this might be a, a a little bit of a long but well worth it tangent. And Robert Burns Day is something I was already aware of. Um, uh, Brandon, Brandon, but, yeah. If we didn't have long non sequiturs on this show, well, it's tangential. So this is a big part of where where like uh, I'd say the majority of the folklore pull from comes from. This okay. is like in the culture and around the time period where all of this is being pulled. Um, so it's, out, it's celebrated each January 25th, where guests are led into the dining hall with bagpipes, and they welcome the chairman. There are toasts at extreme frequency, and each person's goal is to be funnier and give a better speech and poem than the previous person. So, here's my question. Yeah? Who's the chairman? Uh, it's, it's different. Like, so if it's a big family thing. Then oh, okay. you might select a family member. If it's a community thing, it might be like whoever the popular local guy in the community is. But it's just a, a big thing or just a group of friends. But you have to be invited. So you can't just show up to Robert Burns Day. It's like an invitation only huge thing. Oh, my God. And well, it, you, you don't yeah. want to invite someone who's not has zero chill. Exactly. You got to have chill. And it, it starts with the Selkirk Grace by Robert Burns, which means... Or reads as some have meat and cannot eat, some cannot eat that want it. But we have meat and we can eat, so let the Lord be thank it. So that's all right then. The best grace ever, which I think I'm going to replace with uh, uh, our Thanksgiving um, <laughs> grace. Then Haggis is brought in on a silver pad platter while they play bagpipes the entire time it's being carried down the table. And then the Haggis poem is recited whilst holding a ceremonial knife in the air, and you toast to the Haggis. 
And Man, it, do they do they go out in the hills and the moors and just murder a haggis? For yes, yeah, this... it's hard to catch a wild haggis. It's really hard. It's pretty hard. And the the haggis poem uh, goes. Good luck to you and your honest plump face, great chieftain of the sausage race. Above what? them all, you wait, take your wait. place. <laughs> Stomach, tripe, or intestines. Well, you are a worthy grace, as long as my arm. The groaning trencher, there you fill your buttocks <laughs> like a distant hill. Um, your pin will help mend the mill in time of need, while through your pores the dews distill. That's all uh, I'm going to read. Uh, it's very long, but it's great. <laughs> Uh, the dews distill, as yeah. in, like... Through your pores, the dews distill. So I'm guessing that when they cook it, the, the moisture goes through uh, the outer intestine and forms droplets. That's my guess. Oh, uh, so here's the thing. Yeah? I I thought that they were... I didn't realize they were talking about the haggis. Yeah. I thought they were talking about the chairman of the... <laughs> no! Event. No! Um... <laughs> Great That's... chieftain of the sausage race. <laughs> well, oh, I thought man. that that's why I that's why my reaction was like, wait, what? what? Yeah, no. But if so, it's haggis, that makes sense. It's an incredibly long poem that's very funny, all about haggis. <laughs> um, it is also uh, pretty fun to note that the chairman is judged by everyone attending on how well he does. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's round robin uh, performances where the first person must stand up and perform, and then another, and then another, and another. And they all have to be somewhat related to Robert Burns. Um, and then comes the immortal memory where one person must get up and give a full speech about how great Robert Burns was. And then comes more poems again, uh, frequent toasting, and then a toast to the lassies, which is mostly uh, ribbing uh, the, the different lassies around the table. Uh, one that Robert Burns wrote was, She asked why wedding rings are made of gold. I ventured this to instruct her. Why, madam, love and lightning are quite the same. On earth they glance, from heaven they came. Love is but the soul's electric flame, and gold is the best conductor. That w- That's a smooth poem. I'm not yeah, going to lie. It's pretty like, smooth. <laughs> like, that's 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 pretty smooth. Yeah. And like that's that's a good play on on Robert Burns's part. Although yeah. now that you told me about the Robert Burns day, yeah, I'm begin. Imagine if he wasn't a real person at all. <laughs> like that would be the best joke. It would. No, he was a real dude though. No, I know, but it would be so great if he was yeah. not a real dude, and it was just this whole thing. Uh huh. Um, where like, hey. You know what would be really great? It's just some drunk Scottish guy in a pub. He's like, you know what would be real great? If we made up a guy. <laughs> if we made up a yeah. guy and we told stories about him on January 25th. <laughs> they made it like a big, like a big deal. Um, now, so you the, know what? Yeah. I'm going to believe that that's the case. Okay. I'm going to choose to believe that. Uh-huh. Cuz if if people can choose to believe whatever they want in this crazy world right now, yeah. Uh I'm going to choose to believe that a poet was not real but the fabrication of a of a country. Yeah. <laughs> uh then there's more songs, uh more toasting and drinking and then it's the lassie's chance to reply. And there are some outstanding videos I found on YouTube of the lassie's response that that was recorded, but God. there are none I'm willing to repeat on the podcast. <laughs> Because they are so brutal. Like, they had me wheeze laughing in my chair. But they <laughs> are brutal, dude. One in particular mentioned a tennis racket and a small child's arm with a haggis as a fist. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, it was very brutal and awkwardly specific. <laughs> and there's some back and forth. A small child's arm with a haggis in its fist. Yeah. Now, is that anything like a... Uh... Like a Bigfoot's appendage? <laughs> there was, let's just say, there's a very embarrassed gentleman at the other end of the table. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he should be embarrassed. Uh, oh, and then the, the chair stands up, 
and says, thank you all for coming. They all sing Old Lang Syne after hours of heavy drinking, and then that's the end of it. I would like to note that um, that that's if I ever have a funeral, um, and the very low chance that that uh, I will ever die, then um, that I'm gonna want a Robert Burns Day, but for me. <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> all right. Uh. Well, I I guess I'll make a note in my phone. <sighs> How do you? I'm scared now because that means you have to choose a date if we're going to make it like a Google Calendar reminder. <laughs> no, yeah. Let me use my predictive powers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, still of the opinion I just want to be thrown in a ditch. Just, just roll over. Just rolled into a ditch. Into a ditch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, just, we'll just... make some very weird circumstance. Like we'll move your body, but we'll 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 make it look like you're doing something weird. Nothing like dirty. Or anything like that, but it'll just be like, what happened? Like, you know the snappers when you throw them on the ground and they snap? Like, maybe we'll get, like, ooh, ooh. an inflatable castle and fill it with snappers and then stuff you inside. <laughs> wait, wait, no, no. Yeah? Uh, middle of the, uh, middle of a desert, right? Middle of it, yeah. Scuba suit. Oh, that'll be fantastic. That's, that's, that's how I want, that's how yeah. I want to be buried. Just on a, in a ditch. I'll get a, a bucket suit. of seawater and just some, like, loose seaweed and maybe some, like, dead fish from a pet store. And just, so we'll dump you and then splash that on top of you and then run away. I just want to mess with, so even if I'm not found, I just want to mess with whatever archaeologist finds me in the future. Oh, yeah. And they're yeah. just like, what happened? <laughs> this, this body is from this time period. We don't have any record of water there. <laughs> That's fantastic. We should start putting everyone in funny poses so that in the future, if anyone ever discovers a, a lost graveyard or something, they'll be like, they all died dancing. <laughs> I'm I'm not convinced that that hasn't already happened. Did you know that there's a, a guy in Pompeii who died while whacking it? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> like... One last time. <laughs> or he's like, finally. I'm Zeus. <laughs> that commitment. It's a commitment, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on Kelpies, uh, author Gary R. Varner, in his book, Creatures in the Mist, Little People, Wild Men, Spirit Beings Around the World, Colon, this is the second colon, a study in comparative mythology. Again, Man. these folklore books have got to get their act together. Yeah, I love folklore book names. It's phenomenal. It's so long. <laughs> it's so pointlessly long. Yeah, there's no reason. It's got two colons. Yeah, once you hit the first colon, you're already pushing it. Yeah. The, uh, so in, in that book, he writes that the Kelpie was said also to appear as a black horse that resided in the locks and pools of Scotland. It would rise swiftly and powerfully to the surface whenever a hapless human erroneously wandered nearby. Reportedly, their neighing and whinnying could be heard from beneath the depths during thunderstorms, and uh, one telltale proofs of the Kelpie, should one happen to come across it, is said that their hooves are reversed. Uh, that's nightmarish. Yeah, a horse with backwards hooves. Well, a horse is already a nightmare. Yeah, that's true. Like, let's, let's be real. Like, I, I've grown up near enough to horses that I'm not scared of them. Mm-hmm. But if you're from an area where you've never met a horse before and you meet a horse for the first time. Yeah. It's, it's just a mass of rippling muscle and razor sharp hooves. Oh, so I've been around horses Because, like, I've been to your house. I've been to where my grandmother used to do um, accounting. They had a bunch of horses there, and and they would be around horses frequently. I did valet for an event once Mm -hmm. down near – the event itself was between your and I both houses, but they they needed a guy to do valet parking and and then afterwards do, like, serving throughout the event. So I did that. But they had, I forget the name of the horse, is one of the, uh, like, a second place Olympic horse. Thunderhoof. But for, like, big big imperfectness. 
whatever the yeah. big imperfectness because I don't know a lot about horse competitions. That okay. thing was like two horses standing on each other's shoulders. It was scary big. Probably a draft horse of some kind. It was Fly some tail. kind of huge. I don't know anything really about the animals. Um, the, so uh, it was just big and scary. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah. horses are big and scary. Yeah. And a horse that has backwards hooves is even scarier. Because that ain't right. <laughs> the uh mcculloch uh this is one of Werner's sources vert vert ver, god damn it vert so the other guy that wrote a book he Verners. listed mcculloch um as one of his sources yep. so then th- one of that guy's sources mcculloch uh okay describes the dreaded water horse of the scottish islands somewhat differently than rice uh a horse with staring eyes Webbed feet and a slimy coat. So I'm imagining human feet now. Oh, human webbed feet, like in Water human World. Human webbed feet. Oh yeah, man, or like um, someone who was like a twin mm-hmm. that ate their other twin. Oh, okay. And then the one twin yeah. takes over, but it has a murderous rage because it hasn't been able to experience life. <laughs> you know, normal horror movie stuff. Yeah, normal horror movie stuff. mm Hmm. This each, uh, Usig, which I'm pretty sure that's not how I'm saying it, but it's Scottish for water horse, uh, according to McCullough, assumes different forms and lures the unwary to destruction. Or he makes love in human shape to a woman, uh, some of whom See? discover his true nature by seeing a piece of waterweed in his hair and only escape with difficulty. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> no, you were not. You I are not it. wrong. I called it. I knew that was going to be how it goes. Uh, it's how so it always the, goes. <laughs> it's how it always goes. I mean, if if humans weren't making weird things into weird sex stuff, we it, wouldn't be humans. It'd be a great romantic comedy. Would it? I'm pretty sure that there is a romantic comedy that is basically that. Is there? Um, You're yeah. not talking about old Greg. I'm not talking... Well, that's... That's the greatest love story of all love stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was H2O. Was Oh, nope. That's that's not it. That is definitely not it. It's not Halloween. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, H2O just add water. Oh, that was a TV show. Aha! So there's, there's a lot of films about mermaids. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of them are like love stories. Oh, the mermaid was really good. That's a good one. I think I saw the mermaid. Yeah, so I should probably stop talking about. Oh, the mermaid, Lake of the Dead. That sounds good. That sounds amazing. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna just I'm just gonna look around and try and find the thing. Okay, I probably won't find it. Yeah. So something interesting I found in a scanned version of tales of the water kelpies is that uh dr carl blind who wrote a very exhaustive series of papers on the water powers of the contemporary re- review of 1881 these old things are hard to get through man They're, yeah uh, there's a there's a reason why i do um modern modern stuff yeah <laughs> so he, he maintains that the gaelic stories are of norse origin and that what is significant in the matter is that such tales do not exist among the Welsh. And the matter is that such tales do not... Oh, I wrote, I, I wrote that twice. Uh, the mermaid superstition is seemingly absent in Wales. It appears, uh, for the most part, as a horse, but it may, in its malignant form, be a young man of fair proportions or may appear as an old wife uh, craving shelter and protection. Here I'd like to also note that if you... Look for pictures of Kelpies in human form. They're all naked ladies. None of them are like weird dudes or like old like cravens or anything like that. Well, they're they're just naked ladies. Well, that's just because people like painting naked ladies. That's probably true. I know that is true. Not probably true. That is no, true. No, it's it's definitely yeah. true. It's definitely <laughs> true. Mainly because uh, there's a lot to it. Yeah, there's a lot of. <laughs> There's a lot of art history to go through mm-hmm. just to explain those trends. 
But the long and short of it, a lot of men were artists. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, the Welsh don't matter. That, because uh, cause they, they have yeah. all those crazy names like Worcestershaws. Oh, what? The Worcestershire? Yeah, the West Wor- Worcestershire shows. Or, 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 or. Yeah, well, it's, Wor- it's Wor- Worcester, Worcestershire. But it's supposed to be Worcester. Worcester? I watched I watched that get made on a how it, like how it gets made is now like blended a, fermented sardines. Yeah, I didn't realize that, but you know what? It didn't stop me from wanting it. <laughs> In its kinder aspects, it may be a mermaid who is caught by the lucky swain while in uh, Deshable in regard to her seal's skin. So I guess they also have seal skin. Oh, that that doesn't feel like a good feel. No. She lives with him happily for a period of time, but at an unlucky moment, the seal's skin is restored to her. She disappears. Uh, she just disappears. She, she eventually turns into a seal and disappears, I guess. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and then poof. Isn't that a Selkie, though? Uh, Selkies and Kelpies have a lot of things in common. Okay. But but think they are, they're different. So Selkie, I didn't do research into Selkies, but it's, I guess like a mermaid with a horse head. Okay. Uh, they're, they're so close. It's so hard to... Yeah. Like, they're, they're, I think it's one of those things where the myths are so close together that they've been blended because they've been re- reproduced so many times with so yeah. many different variations. Mm-hmm. Cause that does happen in folklore a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, uh, the word Kelpie as Mr. Campbell says is not Gaelic, but is doubtlessly a derivative from the root of calf in the English of German Kalb. So that's, we got the first part already up top, but we didn't really go into the German for Kalb. Uh, Oh so, yeah. Uh, the word Kelpie, each usage water horse is, uh, there's no general name in the Gaelic uh, language for water sprites. Uh, we may note in passing that the well-known expression Old Nick, mm-hmm. um, the name has nothing to do with Nicholas, but is the German uh, Nicks and the Hor- Norse Nick, which means sea goblin. Sea goblin. Sea oh. goblin. Oh, okay. So, uh, non sequitur. I yes. started watching Demon Slayer. How is it? I almost watched it yesterday. Really good. Watch nice. it. It's phenomenal. Okay. It has really good animation. Uh, but it does have some bad spots that have bad animation. But that's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> they translated Tengu as Goblin, and I'm so confused. What? Yeah. They, the Crunchyroll translated Tengu as Goblin, and it... it Tengu is a distinct thing. Does it make more sense in the context of the show? No. Or is it no? No. No, it doesn't. Because the... I just hit my mic. Uh, it doesn't because um, the guy is wearing a literal Tengu mask. Okay. Like, they you know, might the have red... just done that because they might not have thought that Americans would have... If they just wrote Tengu, that the they might not know what that is. Here's the thing, Brandon. Normal people aren't watching Crunchyroll. That's true. Yep. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say it. Normal people don't watch it. True. <laughs> so, deal with that. Mm. <laughs> uh, he continues that, Personally, we have been assured of the existence, even in these modern days of trains and the telegraph, of this water horse. We know of a man... Uh, he is of a family famous for their supernatural visions and second sights who went into a snowy night near a wood near where they lived. It was a plantation beside the Tromi Bridge. Uh, and then he says some other locations that I can't um, pronounce, Badenoch. but it's an area famous for boggles. What did you say? Badenoch? Badenoch? Yeah, Badenoch. Ba- Badenoch. Yeah. Badenoch. So, sounds, sounds good to me. Badenoch. That's, that's, that's good enough. Ooh, is, that, is that Kelpie from the Pathfinder um, artwork? It's it kind entirely of... possible. I for, I don't know where that picture actually came from. <laughs> it, it came from Google Images. <laughs> is where it came from. Um, the snow was lying deep on the ground. We had felled oh. a tree for firewood. Uh oh, what's up? I, I was face. really close. <laughs> It's the 5e cat Kelpie. Oh, is it the 5e Kelpie? Yeah. Shoot. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, let's see. Uh, he felled a tree for firewood. <laughs> Jesus so this Christ. was quite contrary to the laws of the estate. He was just rolling it around the road when he saw in the middle of the road a horse uh, ready uh, caparisoned for the purpose of sledging some firewood with the traces uh, and everything complete. So he, he's moving the wood. He sees a horse that's all done up like it's ready to move wood. And he's like, perfect. This is exactly what I needed. So um, hmm, I so here's the thing. Yeah. Anytime you're walking through the woods or doing anything... Yeah. And you see something that is exactly what you need. Uh-huh. Like, not just an approximation of what you need, but literally what you need. Yeah. If you're carrying anything, just drop it. And run. Turn around and leave. Just run. Yeah, just run. Because you know what? You know what? That's how people die. <laughs> In every folklore, folklore legend, that's how people die. Yeah. So instead of running, what he did is he just stood there transfixed i imagine mouth agape full of wonder and alarm but as soon as he realized that it was a water kelpie um he, he was he started breathing a fervent invocation of the holy trinity holy tri, tri- brandon oh, god it continues there is not an episode where you don't where you, where you pronounce something that you definitely know how to pronounce it's the normal words are the it's ones always, i find the hardest it's always the normal words it's I don't know I don't know what it is but anyway he says the holy thing and then he runs away after staring at it for a little bit. <laughs> See here's the thing, it actually turns out it was just a normal horse, and it got dejected and sad. Oh, just a lone wandering horse, and that yeah. but he didn't realize that and just panicked. Yeah, yeah. So the following tales come from us from various sources, but we are more especially indebted to a young man from. Seth Lendershire. Uh, That's pretty much right. Suther Landshi- Landshires, if you break into three parts. So it's Su- Suther Landshire or something. Yeah. Mr. Cothel Kerr, presently uh, a student at the Aberdeen University, uh, says that there's a lock seven miles from our house. Uh, he says referring to a neighborhood of Far and Thurso called Loch Nan Clon- Clon- uh the children's lake. Uh, it came to be so named because a number of children were playing by its side on one Sunday when a beautiful bay uh, came out of the lock. The children went out there and one mounted its... Oh, God, yeah. this story. Yeah, they went there and mounted on its back, all except one who did not care about riding it. He, however, put his finger on its shoulder to feel the sleek pile of the horse, but found that he could not take the finger away again. So his finger sticks <laughs> to the side of the Kelpie. Uh, this was the one I was going to make a joke about. Because was at it? The very, at the top of the episode. Yeah. Because I read it in uh, that one book I'm reading. I, well, actually okay. I read. Um, yeah. The, like, uh, abominable science book. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I read about it in there because they were talking about uh, Kelpies in the context of um, the Loch Ness Monster. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, But he found he could not take his finger away. The horse began to move. The boy whipped out his knife and cut off the finger. Uh, Whoa, whoa. Uh, I forgot that he did that. Yeah. Can I just say that's metal? That is very metal. It like is so crazy. Like credit to that kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh and well was his need. For the next minute the horse rode with the children on its back right into the lock and disappeared. When the next day the people came to the lock to search, all they could see were the internal parts of the children floating <laughs> on the water's edge. God <laughs> He like it was brutal. them. Yeah, it oh was my. a gnarly tale. Um, so if you think about this from the perspective of horses, uh, kelpies are heroes. <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, in our legends, they're nightmares. But to mm-hmm. a horse, it's like, hey, these horses are sticking it to the man. Yeah. <laughs> They can crib all they want. 
<laughs> Cast off the shackles of the oppressors. <laughs> Horseshoes, they should... Uh, I was going to try to make a horseshoes joke, but I couldn't think of it. Uh, so Kelpies have the ability to trans themsel transform themselves into non-equine forms, and they can take an outward appearance of human figures. This is going to keep coming up, because every source basically just restates that. Ha <laughs> did you know they can transform? And I'm like, yes, I read that five times already. Yeah, um, that's usually how it goes. Yeah, they could betray themselves by the presence of water weeds in their hair. Gregor described the Kelpie adopting the guise of his, as a wizened old man, continually muttering to himself while sitting on a bridge. So we're just talking about a homeless person. Stitching yeah, a much. pair of trousers, uh, believing it to be a Kelpie. Uh, a passing local struck it on the head, which one dick move but two, like what it, it reverted back to its equine form and scampered back to its lair at a nearby pond i love the idea of a horse scampering yeah <laughs> i do too like i, I, I like... never i never envisioned a horse because it's such a big animal as scampering yeah i also like to picture the modern day equivalent of that where they it's a jerk who doesn't even know what kelpies are he just attacks a homeless person, but as soon as, like, the shoe like, he throws at him makes impact, he just bamps into a horse and scampers, and the other guy's like, What just happened? <laughs> My entire reality is a lie! That would be phenomenal! <laughs> You're walking down the street, and you just bump into someone, and they poop into a, a horse, and it's yeah. like, <laughs> What? <laughs> You you uh you you accidentally like you know you come around a corner too quickly and you know yeah. you do that thing where you almost collide they freak out turn you a horse. <laughs> Kelpies have a bad problem with uh they they can't keep their form very well. Yeah, no, they're pretty bad at it with the backwards feet and all that. Oh jeez, backwards hooves actually. This is another backwards foot monster. It's like our third backwards foot monster. Well, it's at least two, because there was the one from Brazil, and then there's this one. Yeah, well, the one, the Brazil one, I think a couple of them had, because that, that one was like a grab bag of uh, monsters yeah, yeah. that like cigars and rum. There was also uh, the guy who made super long uh, strides for Bigfoot by running down a hill with the, the footprints backwards. <laughs> we did talk about that on one episode. Shoot, I think it was yeah. on Christmas Foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, other accounts describe the Kelpie when appearing in human form as a rough, shaggy man who leaps behind a solitary rider, gripping him and crushing him. So, yeah, horse heroes. Horse heroes. Yeah. Oh, it uh, also tears them apart and devours their remains. Um, horse heroes. Horse heroes. <laughs> Again, imagine... The, it, they, a horse watches a Kelpie attack a human in their head. They hear, there goes my hero. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to see the Kelpie that's horse Spider-Man. Spider-Horse? Spider-Horse. I mean, it probably exists in the, the multiverse of Marvel. It, You know, it probably does. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Spider-Horse... Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, I'm in Google Image. Well, no, it, it's not particularly a thing. Uh, there is there is a spider horse. It's a uh, Ford Fusion ad. Yeah. So <laughs> there's that. Oh, oh, oh! And someone can put a horse's head on a spider. Yep. I also um, see um five D and D five E alternative Underdark mounts. Uh, that's pretty cool. At the RPG Stack Exchange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like doing under dark though. I don't yeah. know. It's just it's too limiting. Yeah. Uh a folktale from Barra tells of a lonely Kelpie that transforms itself into a handsome young man to woo a pretty young girl uh it was determined to take for its wife. But the girl recognizes the man as a Kelpie and removes his silver necklace, which in horse form is the equivalent to his bridle while he sleeps. The Kelpie immediately reverts to its equine form and <laughs> And the girl takes it home to her father's farm, where it's put to work for several years. What? And... Yeah. But, like, that's so... So, okay. I I'm imagining her taking off the, the silver necklace while yeah. he's in bed. And then it's just like... 
yeah. and the bed gets crushed. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, that was my bed. <laughs> you know what? You're going to have to work for a year to pay me back for that. I'll name you Bojack. Oh, God. At the end of the year, uh, the girl uh, rides the Kelpie uh, to consult a wise man who tells her to return the silver necklace. So the wise man then asks the Kelpie once again, once transformed back into a, a, a pretty boy, um, whether if given the choice, it would choose to be a Kelpie or mortal. The Kelpie in turn asks the girl whether if he were a man, she would agree to be his wife. She confirms that she would, after which uh, the Kelpie chooses to become mortal man and they get married. So that one's got a happy ending. There's no... Uh, is that a happy ending? Minimal disembowelment. Yeah, but that just feels gross. <laughs> well, he's all more like, I don't think he had, well, did he still have like horse feet? I don't know. But like, there, there's a lot of like, that relationship is going to have some terrible dynamics. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, you're going, probably right. They are going to need to go to a uh, 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 a Scottish couples counselor. But the problem is they're not going to be able to, to decide between a horse mm-hmm. and a human. <laughs> yeah. They're going to fight over that. Yeah. Well, I like I like the yeah. idea that, that they go there and uh, they're like the whole like joke about the, no one ever knows what they want to where they want to go to eat. So she's mm-hmm. sitting there with like her arms crossing her back to him and he's doing the same thing. And then the counselor is like, why don't you talk about it? And she's like, it's just. Well, he ever wants to eat our apples, and he's like, I like sugar cubes, too. <laughs> I said we could have oats. Yeah. <laughs> it's, he only he never cooks anything except oats and sugar cubes. I want haggis. Yeah. <laughs> They're too hard to catch. <laughs> there, he got a set of haggis trap. <laughs> <laughs> They're quick little buggers, the haggis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, it can also kill or even capture a Kelpie, as long as you do so when it appears as a horse. Well, all you gotta do is be attractive enough for the Kelpie to be interested in you, and then you trap it with marriage. Oh, no! <laughs> and, with this wi- wi- and with this ring, I... Ha ha! Gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> the gold is there to be the gold acts as a binding agent in this yeah. case <laughs> uh, so, so to, to capture it you do so with a halter with a cross on it and then once you've done this you can control the kelpie one tale speaks of a laird morphy uh, who did just such a thing um, and used the kelpie to haul stones in order to build a castle after completion <laughs> The Kelpie was released, but um, it was pretty mad, so it cursed the young man, saying, Sir, back in Baines, driving the Lord of Murphy's stains, the Lord of Murphy shall never thrive so long as this Kelpie lives. Which, um, I mean, at least that's the best thing I could, is all, that's old Scottish. So that's yeah, yeah. what I translated. They didn't provide a translation, but that's my closest translation. So, I, I'm thinking of Morphy. Yeah, as a derogative term for Kelpies because they can morph. No, Morphe. It's or, the Lord of. It was the Laird of the Lord of Morphe. Where the was the the Lord of Morphe an animorph? Oh, was he an Andalin? What is it? And it, what is it? The, the weird, uh, sci- uh Yeah. What are they called? They're Andalins. They they, yeah. they were like. Centaur. I know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned this already or not, but I think a really great Animorph would be a reverse Animorph where, like, an otter turns into Danny DeVito. Um, so, about that, this is a, yeah. this is a spoiler uh, for a book series that finished in 2001. <laughs> um, one of the main characters gets trapped into hawk form. Yeah. Um, after his first morph. Yeah. And he gets the power to morph again, and he's able to morph into himself for an hour at the time. At a time. Yeah, John, we've all read the entire Animorph series. Listen, don't Elvis kid yourself. Was great. <laughs> My recall of the series isn't super great, but I remember reading all of them because they had them in the school library. 
Oh, so, okay, this is a thing I didn't know. Yeah. The first 24, this is now a Animorphs fan cast. Um, the first 24 books of the Animorphs series were written by K.A. Applegate. However, books 25 to 52 and Animorphs 1 and Animorphs 2 were written by ghostwriters. What? And That's published fantastic. As, as K.A. Apple, uh, uh, Applegate books. Yeah. Which Shoot. is wild to me. Also, there was a toy line of what? Animorphs toys. Oh, wait, I think I recall that. Yes. Um... There's actually a really wild story to that. Yeah. So, um, that... Oh, I totally remember that. A hundred percent. Yeah. That toy line bombed. Did it? Yeah. Oh, it totally bombed. And now here's the really cool story. So what happened was Hasbro had four molds left that they never okay. released. But they also had the Transformers series. Oh, so who was that? Was that... So Silver I have, one? I don't know if you can see it. You see the, that that uh, carded transformer I have over there? Yeah. The reason he's still in card is because he has gold plastic syndrome. Mm -hmm. Um, but they released them as Beast Wars mutants, ah, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's why the mutants have the faces because they're supposed yeah. to be the faces of the of the the, the kids. That makes so much sense. That's a cool story. Listen, if there's one thing I know about, it's dumb sh it's dumb stuff that I read on the Transformers wiki because I was just browsing it one day. <laughs> oh. If you did bridle a Kelpie, the, uh, like the story says above, it may just run into the water and drown you. Alternatively, a saddle removed from a Kelpie gives you the power to turn anything you pointed at into a horse. Yes! Oh, right? man. Best like, superpower ever. So, okay. Okay. So I'm envisioning pointing it at a tree. And it tree turns into a horse. And then I'm envisioning it pointing at... So basically, what have you pointed at the earth? <laughs> horse earth horse earth horse earth we will ride horse earth into valhalla here's a better question what if you point at a horse that's Double fucked horse? up that's fucked up you should know that's just disgusting is it like cat dog with horses no it flips inside out hmm. <laughs> all it's guts are on the outside and it's just like i'm in incredible pain <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, one thing I am, however, hesitant to state is the Kelpie's weakness to silver. Based upon how f similar this is to werewolves, uh, whose weakness to silver originates from Western horror movies and has no basis whatsoever in history, uh, although it has caused minor revisions to folktales to include it. Uh, for more, I would refer you to the Monster Talk episode on werewolves, um, as he'll... They'll, he'll do it better than I can on explaining why everything is weak to silver uh, based on horror movies. Um, I didn't know that. Yep. I would also like to note that Kelp, uh, the Kelpie's weakness to silver is significantly more modern than the rest okay. of the uh, folklore around them. All right. That's yep. fair. Uh yeah, so as for the origin of the Kelpie, I defer to Gary R. Varner, who states that Kelpies may be a reflection of the human sacrifices once made to appease the gods of water. The association with the horses have roots in horse sacrifices performed in ancient Scandinavia. This again goes back to the Norse mythology that we mentioned up top. Stories of malevolent water spirits served the practical purpose of keeping children away from perilous, perilous areas of water and as warning adolescent women who may be wary of attractive young strangers. The stories were also used to enforce moral standards as they implied that the creatures took retribution for bad behavior uh, carried out on specifically Sundays. Uh, the intervention of demons and spirits was possibly a way to rationalize the drowning of children and adults who accidentally fallen into deep, fast-flowing, or turbulent water. Bam! That's how I was going to try to sum it up at the end, but that guy beat me to it. 
Yeah, pretty much. Because yeah. that, that makes total sense. It's it's kind of like the, the Malambo or whatever episode we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like almost like identical. Yeah. Because uh, like, like we always say, um, a clean explanation for something where you can point to say, hey, this is why everything's terrible. Yeah. Is better than it happens. <laughs> also, um, I know they're called demons, but the fact that they carry out the behaviors on Sunday and they're like punishing people. Yeah. It's weird to me. It's weird to me how demons are vilified in that context, because mm-hmm. to me, it seems like they're acting as uh, like guardians of morality in a sense. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I always thought that was a weird uh, part of, of like, uh, demonology and stuff like that. Because a lot yeah. of them punish the wicked. Mm-hmm. So it's just weird to me that they're considered the villains, I guess. Okay. But then again, angels, uh, if you actually read the Bible, are like screaming monsters. So, you know, that, that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> seraphim yeah seraphim are like nightmare creatures i think Ser- sephir wait seraphim or seraphim Se- the the seraphs they're like like seven winged nightmare heads they're oh there. i gotcha yeah here's a here's a uh image of one really quick oh, shit i don't want to share my screen <laughs> you did the go. same thing I always did earlier. Um, yeah, they're they're like nightmare creatures. That's in the hot. Oh, Sophia. I gotcha. Yeah. You know, I will say this: I ended up in art history in a, uh, um, in undergrad on accident, but it has come in a lot of use for me over the years. The uh, how did you end up in art history? Because uh, I needed a history credit. Oh, and I gotcha. So they put me in it. Uh, here's a fun fact. I was in European history and hated it, and now I'm doing more work <laughs> in that shit than I did in college. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's the irony, isn't it? Yeah. Like, that's that's just... It just beats all. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Oh boy! All right. Well, I think we should probably close up, right? About that sure. Time? Yeah, man. All right. Well, as always, if you want to get in contact with us or you want to see what we're up to, um, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Uh, should be in the show notes. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Twitter is also at cryptopediacast. Um, you can email us at cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com um all these are on the website and all the future things that we're about to say are on the website as well we also have a patreon there's a link in the show notes um there's a facebook group uh we do post stuff to it and the the hornswoggle thing that we talked about is there <laughs> um uh and for the Patreon, if you reach a if you if you donate uh what is it five bucks a month, I think that's Jackalope. Uh yeah, we've got different tiers. We've got the yeah. what is it one dollar, two dollar, five dollar. Yeah, one dollar, one dollar to support the show, two dollars to see the show notes, five dollars you get access to the premium content that's mostly Brandon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think we mentioned this, but um, for the two dollars, the show notes you get uh. Basically, all the links and all that, but you get the full copy of everything we're reading from, and we also add pictures and stuff like that, and and we'll uh, add fun comments to the other person's uh, thing as they're reading it on occasion. Sometimes we'll mock the other person in text. Yeah. um, (laughs) Because that's just the way we roll. That is just the way we roll. Um, Additionally, rate, review, and subscribe. We finally have an iTunes reading. Oh, yeah. Which only took 31 episodes. But, hey, cool. <laughs> yeah, five stars, man. Yeah. Um, if you got any monster requests or stories, feel free to send them. We do have a few that we have to work through. 
Um, mm -hmm. But some of them are like stuff like the Wendigo, which I want to handle more gracefully than, you know, the Kelpie. Because it, it has a lot more, it has a lot more um, significance to me. Yeah, like yeah. as a thing, um, and it's also less our culture than the Kelpie is. <laughs> um, if you have any creepy pasta or cryptid pasta, I might read it. I, I'm gonna probably read something soon. I'm reaching that point now. <laughs> I'm hitting critical mass on my uh, my laziness factor. So. <laughs> So if you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. Uh, for me on Instagram, I'm at mu2057, mostly Transformers in cat pictures. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham, where it's just me ranting about stuff. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And if you want to email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And if you need any art, I don't think we, we dove into this a bunch, but uh, just hit him up, man. Shoot him an email and he'll he'll do uh, he did our artwork. He does a lot of artwork, it looks like, for all things Comedy Network. Yep. Um, he just does a lot of good stuff. He's one of those guys where he's like, you can just see something go oh tom did that one like you'll just see something go by on on the yeah. instagram or, or someone advertising like, oh that's tom's stuff yeah uh. he has a very distinctive scott style so. yeah yeah um as always i'm john i'm brandon and things are gonna get weird <laughs>